Hey friends, it's Laura. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm so glad you have decided to join me for another planty video. Today, I'm going to be talking about low light plants. These are plants that I myself am actually growing in low light and they have not died. When I say low light, I don't mean zero light. I mean somewhere in the room there's a window and the plant is very far away from the window. So there's still a little bit of light coming in, just not even directly on the plant. Also, uh, this isn't my situation, but it could also work that somewhere in the room, there's a grow light. So there's no window, but there's a grow light somewhere. And that light is sort of diffusing towards a plant that could also be considered low light environment. So if you're interested, stay tuned. All right, first up is Aglaonema, or Chinese Evergreen. This specific variety is Aglaonema Siam, or Aurora. I have a couple different varieties of Aglaonema. I love them all, and they all do well in low light. I'm just showcasing this specific one because I don't show it very often. Aglaonema, um, yeah, does great in low light. I have had this one in a little bit brighter light for a while just because I had some space on my shelves and it did grow faster with bright light. It for sure put out more little babies and more leaves. Um, the babies I have since removed to trade away, but there is some new babies coming in there at the bottom. Um, but when I moved it back to low light, it continued to do fine. It just doesn't grow as quickly. And that has been the case for all of my Aglaonemas. They, you know, they grow faster in bright light. In low light, they're just fine. So depends, I guess, what result you would like. But if you're kind of happy with the size of your Aglaonema, which, I mean, I think this is a cute little size, and you don't need it to grow super fast, it is very happy in low light. I water this plant when the stem sort of gets droopy. It will sort of bend forward and that tells me that it needs some water. Aglaonema have pretty fat roots that store water, which is why you just don't need to water them very often. They're kind of similar to Monstera's that way. I've had absolutely zero issue with this plant, no pests. Um, because the leaves are really thin, I don't think a pest would really be attracted to it because maybe spider mites, but there's not much for a pest to do on this plant. But the leaves just are consistently gorgeous. And the color is bright, even when it's not getting a lot of light. I think this is a stunning plant. So if you have, you know, a low light situation, but you still just want like a show stopping plant, I think Aglaonema is a great choice. Like I said, there's tons of different varieties, lots of pink varieties, lots of white varieties, and then some multicolored ones like this as well. Also, what do we think of these glasses. It's gonna be difficult to get this plant in the frame, but I will just do my best. So this is my Philodendron Rojo Congo. As you can see, it is massive. It's not even all in here. It's huge. This is the newest leaf that has come in and it's got sort of a pinkish hue on the back. So beautiful. The stems are red, which I assume is why it's called a Rojo Congo. And this plant sits Okay, oh my goodness. This plant sits in a big plant stand, obviously a big plant stand, quite far away from a window. And as you see, it just put out a new leaf. It is totally happy just getting sort of residual light. Um, this is a brighter room, but it's very, very far away from the windows and it's happy there. I fertilize this um, throughout the winter. I've found that it just continues to grow. So I do keep fertilizing it. And I water it, I'm gonna say about once a month, but basically I water it when the soil is completely dry. I use my moisture meter for this one because the pot is so big. You can't always tell if it's totally dried out or not. But as far as lighting conditions, it does great in low light. Again, at times I have had this in brighter light. It grew a little bit faster. It put out a couple new leaves. I did find that the new leaves had sort of a more vibrant pink hue. So if that's really important to you, then probably more light would be better. But if you're just happy with it the way it is, which as you can see, this is like big enough for now. If you're happy with the way it looks, you just want it to stay alive and occasionally put out a new leaf. Uh, low light is totally fine for this philodendron and um, I highly recommend this plant. 
The leaves are super shiny. I wipe them down once every couple months just because they're so stunning when they're so nice and shiny. I also sometimes polish them with neem oil. They seem to like that. This plant did get thrips at one point. And I mean, can you blame the thrips? Like these are huge leaves, probably good eaten. But once I wiped it down with my DIY solution, and like I said, I keep it polished. Um, it hasn't been a problem. And I think those thrips might've actually come from the nursery, but we won't say that. Philodendron Rojo Congo can kind of live anywhere as long as you're keeping an eye on it. And oh, what a happy plant. So beautiful. It's just so like tropical. If you just want to feel like you live like in a big rainforest, this is a good plant for you. Okay, up next is my Marble Queen Pothos. This lady uh, lives in my bedroom, does not get very much light at all, but continues to put out these like light colored leaves. I find the variegation on Marble Queen Pothos one of the most beautiful um, pothos leaves. Each leaf is totally different, but they're all so pretty. Now this plant, as you can see, isn't huge. If I were to keep this in brighter light, it would grow much, much faster, definitely. Um, that's my experience with other pothos. This one I've always kept in my bedroom and it just kind of stays compact, but it is putting out new leaves. Like this leaf just come, came out recently so it is healthy, it's just not growing super, super fast. So depending if you are wanting that huge, huge trailing plant, then um, either buy it that way already or give it more light. But if you're happy with it, it can live very happily in a low light situation. I have this above my bed and yeah, eventually it will trail even more and I think that'll look so pretty, but for now I'm just happy with the way it is. I would say most pothos are low light plants. I'm choosing to spotlight this one, but I would say most of them are low light except maybe the neon pothos. That one I find with lower light, it just kind of gets leggy. It doesn't die, but it doesn't look its best. So neon pothos, I would say prefer medium to brighter light, but most other pothos will do just fine with lower light. As far as watering, <laughs> you water when it starts to look limp. So these will kind of just go bleh. It'll look not so happy and perky. And then I water it and then it perks right up and it's happy. So definitely if you're living in a low light situation, get yourself a pothos. You will not be disappointed. She'll look pretty, you'll look pretty. Everyone will be happy. Okay, I don't think we can talk about low light plants if we don't talk about ZZ plants. ZZ plants are basically the go-to low light plant. I think anyone will tell you, if you have a low light situation, get yourself a ZZ plant. ZZ plants also, okay, I put one down. ZZ plants also require very, very little water. I water these guys like once every two months and they do fine. So this is um, a ZZ Raven. So that's with the black foliage. And then the other one is a, just a regular green ZZ. There is variegated ZZ plants that are a lot more expensive, but definitely really unique. So if you have a low light situation, you could just get a bunch of different types of ZZ plants if you like the look of this. These both um, I have hung up on the wall. So they, they sit in planters like this and they're up on the wall because I think that really showcases the beautiful stems and just their uniqueness. Also because they're on the wall, I don't overwater them because they're a little bit trickier to water. Um, this one is in a corner that is close to a window but doesn't really, because it's high up, it doesn't really get much light from that window. And it does amazing. This black ZZ Raven is from Plant Gather, which is one of my favorite plant shopping websites. Um, I'll link them below. But I just, I find ZZ plants, they just, they almost look fake because they're so shiny and their shapes are so unique, but they're so easy to care for. And I think anyone with a low light situation should definitely grab one. This can do well anywhere. Like if you have the tiniest little window in your basement apartment, I think your ZZ plant will still thrive. ZZ plants actually have been around since like the prehistoric eras. And that is why they're so easy going because they've survived basically everything. So get yourself a ZZ plant. Uh, you won't regret it. The only thing is don't overwater it. These guys have big bulbs, 
under the soil and sometimes the bulbs will actually come to the surface of the soil that's no problem but sometimes you can see them and those hold moisture almost like how a cactus holds tons of moisture in its body those bulbs will hold moisture for when the plant needs it so if you overwater those bulbs will become rotten and squishy and then the plant will die um, but as long as you don't overwater this plant will not let you down i definitely recommend a zz plant last but definitely not least is philodendron birkin i love birkins i love that they are so much easier to find now they i feel like everywhere you go every grocery store has philodendron birkins um but like they are so beautiful look at this leaf so i actually have two philodendron birkins because i love them so much and they both live in pretty low light. They consistently are putting out new leaves. Oh, there's a new leaf. They're consistently putting out new leaves. They're consistently looking happy. Even these like almost all white leaves come out with really low light. So not all variegation comes from a ton of light. Sometimes, sometimes it just happens because it's a cool plant. I just water them when I notice that the soil is looking pretty dry. They grow happily. I've noticed no pest problems and they don't need a ton of light. Now again, like the other plants, if I were to give this brighter light, I'm sure it would put out more leaves. But I mean, how many new leaves do we need really? They, when I say they, I have two of them. I'll grab, I'll grab the other one. It's feeling left out. All right, here's the other one. This one has like an all white leaf at the moment, which is incredible. You can see that the genetics are slightly different. This one has, um, I would say kind of brighter, wider stripes than the other one. Find one that you like and then keep it in low light. Keep it in medium light if you can, but it will definitely do well in a low light situation. It's beautiful. I mean, this foliage is beautiful. So I can't say enough about philodendron birkins. Definitely get yourself one. You'll be happy. All right guys, so that concludes my list of low light plants. What do you think? Also, what are you growing in low light? Let me know, let everyone know if there's a plant that I missed or that you have found really does well in low light. I think this is information that people need because once you fill up your window shelf, you wanna fill up other shelves, but you don't want your plants to die. Please make sure you are subscribed. That helps me out a lot and it just means you'll get a notification next time I make a plant video. Guys, have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Bye.